trust him. Huh. Someone was hiding behind a monument. A pioneer was sitting there with respect to me. And once again, the voice seemed strangely familiar. Who are you? I took a few steps towards him. Stop! Don't come any closer. For some reason I froze in my tracks. From someone, from somewhere deep inside, an assurance came to me and I understood that I shouldn't argue with him. Alright, I'll stay here. Have you seen him? Talk to him? He asked nervously. Who are you even talking about? He was dressed in a pioneer uniform. You know who. And I definitely did know. He was talking about the weird pioneer I saw earlier. Uh, yes. I answered after a few moments of silence. What did he tell you? The pioneer asked in a pleading tone. Nothing, really. Did he, did he give you advice? Did he tell you what to do? Threaten you? No, nothing like that. Of course, it seemed pretty weird, but nothing more than that. Remember, he may not be alone, or more likely, he's alone, but you may meet many pioneers where he will look like him. And what about you? Who are you? Who are you hiding from? You will understand. In time. Just remember, the most important thing is to find the exit. All of a sudden, a strong gust of wind came through, ripping leaves from the trees and throwing an old paper back into my face. Shielding myself, I averted my eyes. When I looked back at the monument, the pioneer was already gone. Well, well, well. At that moment, I was overwhelmed by fear. Real, almost tangible fear. I remember being scared during my first hours at this camp. But back then, everything around me seemed kind and friendly. Now Savanok revealed its fangs, getting ready to eat me. And the head, the unknown. My body was covered in goosebumps, my throat was dry and my hands were shaking. I tried to ignore it all and headed back to the camp. Oh my gosh! Oh. Ich glaube, mein Stuhl bricht bald auseinander. Schon wieder. It was already dinner time, but I had no desire to go to the canteen. After meeting the second mysterious pioneer, just thinking about the locals made me, if not afraid, then at least creeped out. Oh. I don't even know who or what they are. They all are. And even though nothing has happened yet, it does not mean I can trust them. I stopped in front of the club powers. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I stopped in front of the club house, but then realized that this is not the best spot to be at. I could run into someone which was not something I wanted to do at the moment. Almost running, I hurried towards the forest and walked a few meters along the path before finally stopping. On one side, the mysterious pioneer. Well, two of them to be, pre to be precise. On the other... <sighs> On the other... All the other inhabitants of this camp, who seemed absolutely normal. Either way, my decision to stand back and let everything resolve itself was under some serious pressure. At this point it was clear to me I had to, uh, to do something on my own. But what exactly? Everyone is probably having a dinner, so I have to go. Uh, I have a good chance to make it to Olga. To Olga's place without being noticed. I decided to first take my clothes that I wore when I arrived here along with my cell phone. I won't be able to come up with a solid plan right now off the bat, so for the time being I might as well hide in the forest. I leaped up the steps and entered the building. My clothes were right there where I left them and my phone was, was where it was supposed to be, under my pillow. I quickly grabbed it and was ready to stuff it into my pocket, but then I noticed something on the screen. The message window was open. The text read, You are wrong, Simeon. You are so wrong. Oh, 
Heil. It felt like my soul had left my body. I froze on the spot. I was shaking and my blood was pumping so hard it felt like my skull was going to burst open from the pressure. It took at least a full minute for me to come back to senses. Olga could have typed in the message. Or one of the pioneers. It's easy to figure out how to do it, even if they are not familiar with this technology. But no one besides me should know where I keep the phone. Weil auch unter dem Kopfkissen so geheim ist, Alter. This event was the straw that broke the camel's back. I rushed out of the house, determined never to come back here. Jetzt wird's auch noch Nacht, Alter. Night fell on the campgrounds. I had been sitting in the woods for a few hours, trampling at every noise. The spot that I chose was far away from the path, so it would be hard to find me. Oh, jetzt sind wir zurück beim creepy shit, oder was? Na danke. I was keeping a few plans in my head for the time being. To try and run, to kill every single person in the camp. However, on the other hand, one thought chased me and I realized that I shouldn't behave like this because of some strange pioneer. Or even because of the message on the phone. All of this was reinforcing the thought that everything happened here was far from normal. However, there was no proof that anyone in the, in the camp had anything to do with it. I could have stayed here until morning, lost in my own thoughts, but I heard footsteps coming from somewhere nearby. Oh shit. So you decided to escape af to to escape after all. I turned around but couldn't see the pioneer's face in the dark. Nevertheless, I was pretty sure that it was him. I wasn't afraid then. More precisely, I was so physically exhausted that I was prepared for any possible course of events and somehow managed to re Okay. And somehow managed to reason ap appropriately and to maintain the conversation. I wouldn't call this an escape, I answered slowly, stretching every word. Huh? Then what is it? A tactical retreat. Brilliant! Ah, shit. He burst into laughter. Laughter. Listen, why don't you tell me what's going on? Who are you and what you want from me? What did that guy tell you at the gate? It seemed that he didn't even hear my question. He told me not to trust you. I lied. But on the other hand, I thought that it was the, it, 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 it was what he meant. Well, that's always the way for him. Running away, hiding. I could hear irritation in his voice. I am not sure what kind of circus you are running here, but I'm not going to be a part of it. Oh, why not? You're the star of the all. I couldn't see his face, but I bet he was smiling. Explain my part to me then. You know, I was like you in the beginning. The first time everything went peacefully. Then I escaped. I tried to understand what was going on, got mad and even tortured them to get the truth. He laughed crazily. I shivered. But it was pointless. Continued the pioneer after calming down a bit. Pointless. And then I began to notice the lapses. At first I just heard the voices from a distance and sometimes in my head. Then vague silhouettes appeared. Then they slowly took on physical form. And finally they stepped into my world. I could touch them, introduce them to other pioneers. And they all were different. Different! Do you get it? Different! He started shouting. And it recurred again and again. And you can... You, you can get used to the loops, but... Then I learned how to get into the worlds by myself, to interact with the others. But it turned out that I'm not alone. There are lots of us. Today you saw at least one more. He fell silent. I don't know what question to ask and didn't want to interrupt his story, I simply waited. After a minute he continued. 
It's not that simple, of course, and it's not always possible, only under certain circumstances. When you feel strong emotions, for example. I instantly remembered how I saw him in the first time, the time when I didn't feel any emotions at all. Include him some moments when you feel happy, as if he was reading my thoughts. I see. So you're trying to say that there are several parallel worlds, including the same camp with its inhabitants, where I'm replaced by you or that guy I met at the bus stop. Yeah, something like that. This answer didn't surprise me at all. In the end, it's clear that whatever happens here is beyond the limits of human understanding, and his theory didn't even seem all that unusual. But you have said that everything recurs. Yes, it recurs. And what will happen? Afterwards? You'll start from the very beginning. You'll wake in, you welcome the bus, come to the camp, meet, meet Olga, the girls, electronic. But if it happened to you, then why should it happen to me as well? It happens to everyone! Once again, he laughed hysterically. And how many loops have you experienced so far? I stopped counting them already. At first I tried to remember them though. Maybe a few hundred? No wonder it was very clear to me that this guy was suffering from a progressing mental dysfunction. But you searched for a way out, didn't you? He didn't answer. That's what that guy at the bus stop was talking about. Because he understands nothing, damn it! He shouted. Because it's just like you, constantly running away, hiding. What will you suggest then? If I had any suggestions, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you. Alright, but you were trying, weren't you? Are you trying to understand what I know, since I've been around here for a long time? He asked cheerfully. Well, that's evident. Yes, I did try to run away from here. There! He waved towards the forest. There's nothing there. Nothing but trees. But I had been walking there for several days and finally passed out, I found myself on the bus again. Same for walking along the road. It's endless. Talking to somebody about it that is pointless, you probably already understood it by yourself. I did. I interjected. Even if you try to explain your situation directly, at best you will just be considered an idiot. What if you try to not leave the bus? It's pointless. Sooner or later you'll be found. Even I even tried to spend the entire time there. In the end I fell asleep and everything started from the beginning. And what if you started by yourself and leave? No keys. And I don't have any car checking skills. Das hätte ich mir halt mal versucht, Alter. <sighs> a cursed cycle. Exactly. A long silence fell. Finally I asked, And what about the people around here? Don't they raise absolutely reasonable suspicions? Suspicions? Lord again. The only thing that is suspicious about them is that no matter how, how much you tell them, they stare at you with their eyes out on stalks. The people... I feared them at first too. Then I used them for different experiments. And now I don't consider them humans, they're all dolls, puppets. Ah, der hat bestimmt schon alle weggeflankt, Alter. Huh. Der hat bestimmt auch Olga weggeflankt. Und das Lolly auch. Vermutlich hat er dann alle getötet und hat sie dann nochmal weggeflankt und hat sie dann getötet und dann als sie tot waren weggeflankt und äh. Ja, dann hat er eine Gangbang-Party veranstaltet, also das, das würde ich tun, das würde ich versuchen. Wenn ich in so einem ewigen Loop wäre, hm. Damn, son. Wäre eigentlich ganz witzig. You can easily predict any reaction, any word or action. So they aren't worth fearing, are they? The one worth fearing is yourself, he said softly. 
Do you know how funny it is when human bones crack as they slowly break from distension? Yeah. Was heißt denn distension? Weiß ich gerade gar nicht. Aber es klingt eklig, ja. Looks like he has finally lost his marbles. <laughs> Listen, I understand everything, but the other one thinks that's a bit much too. But it doesn't matter. Nobody but you is really here. The pioneer suddenly fell silent. Well, no, I don't agree with you. You're probably thinking why I didn't check this all by myself, aren't you? Why I didn't try to reach the nearest village or town? Yes, I did have such thoughts. Why wasn't I suspicious? Why was I doing different stuff instead of searching for answers? Well, yes. Forget about it. That's normal. We all behave like this for the first time here. But how many others have you seen so far? Not that many. The pioneer was lost in thought. About ten people, maybe. But I'm sure there are many more of them. And? Is everyone like this? In fact, yes. Only the details are different, but the main thing is in invariable. There's no way out of it here. And by the way, you're just like the majority of them. The only thing that differs is that you have heard everything from me instead of experiencing it yourself. I don't know if I should thank him for that. Well, and what now? Nothing. He said shortly. I closed my eyes and lost myself in thought. That was a critical mistake. Ah, oh, shit. When I opened the eyes, I didn't see anybody, just like the previous times. So it's clear what's going on now. But in fact, how could everything that he said guide me to an answer? Yes, I'm not alone. Yes, everything uh, recurs. But what's the reason for all this? And what is more important, where's the way out? The only useful thing that I extracted from the conversation was that local inhabitants were not worth fearing. And it was quite significant to me for now, since it was much better than sleep in a warm cabin instead of the forest. Huh. Aber was ist dann mit den guten Enden? Ich, als wenn man es dann schafft, eine Beziehung mit so einem Mädchen aufzubauen und man dadurch dann zurück in die reale Welt kommt. Ist das die Lösung des Ganzen? Das hat er nie versucht. I sighed, took my things and headed towards the cab. As I was walking, the conversation with a fellow suffer sufferer popped up in my mind every now and then. Why did I not ask him about a message on my phone and some other stuff? There, was, there, there were hints, after all. Maybe if I had found some details out, I could have drawn some conclusions. However, it didn't seem like our meeting would be the last one. The lights were on in Olga's cabin. I opened the door gently and went in. Speak of the devil, here you are! The camp leader said angrily. Olga, I'm so tired now, so let's put off the lecture. Tired from what, I wonder? From everything! I snapped rudely. The camp leader looked at me with surprise. I fell into the bed without undressing. Seven, a role model pioneer shouldn't behave like that. And how should I? And, and, and how should he behave then? Well, not like that. The cab leader stumbled for a moment, as if struggling to pick the right words. You should respect his seniors. I respect you immensely, for sure. Semyon, the sarcasm in my voice didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> and now I would like to sleep. Wait, I. By the way, how far is the nearest town? When does the bus arrive? How can I get out of here? I asked in a surprisingly calm voice. 
there was no answer and there shouldn't have been any. I said all this in just in order to, to get rid of her. Why are you silent? I'm tired, let's talk about that tomorrow. Oh fucking course. The camp leader got up and turned off the light. Yes, it's all just like that guy said. Why did I speak to him so calmly and probably, I wonder? I should have been shivering from horror. That pirate didn't have much credibility, but I had a feeling that he's unable to harm me. As soon as I thought that it, it would be a good idea to ask something else, fatigue overtook me and I passed out. <lacht> Schon um 9 Uhr aufgestanden, zum Friseur gegangen. Ugh. The bright sunlight was striking my eyes even through my eyelids. Aua. I stretched out lazily and quickly got myself out of the bed. It was 2 p.m. It looks like yesterday really finished me off and my body required much more time to recover than usual. I had to stroll around the room thinking of what I should do today. Obviously my life in the camp would never be the same again after everything that I would heard from that strange pioneer. And if everything was just as he said, I have plenty of time ahead. I grabbed my high cheat kit and went outside. I managed to take only a couple of steps as somebody ran into my back. I turned around and saw Alyssa. Hey, be careful! said she indifferently and ran on, the, on her way. She held some kind of a bag in her hands. Ah, whatever, yet another ordinary day in this crazy place. I finished brushing my teeth and then spent an eternity washing my face with ice cold water to, to, to <laughs> ice cold water to bring myself to senses and refresh my uh, my head at least a bit. I felt a bit better after that. Suddenly hope struck me from nowhere. It wasn't a hope that I would like uh, I, I would be likely to leave this place safely. Raider, I just didn't want to believe that everything is up is as bad as that guy told me. Good morning. I heard a faint voice coming from the woods. Someone stood behind the tree. Morning. Are you ready? Ready for what? I looked again and it seemed like it was the pioneer from the bus stop yesterday. Indeed, I was prepared for such weirdness today, so I wasn't really surprised and startled and, and, and started the conversation quite clear headed. You didn't believe him, do you? Did you? What are you talking about? Everything that he said. Alright, but what is your opinion on what is happening? I had already distanced myself from the outside world and decided to tread everything happening to me just like a fictional film, not reality. Hopefully it would give him more room to move around it in terms and situational logic and analysis. There's an exit. There has to be. He said excitedly. I don't know, but I'd like to believe the two. If you would just... Samian? Oh. Gopnitsa. I turned around. Slave was standing right next to me. Who, who were you talking to? Um, no one. Just talking to myself. I hardly think it's worth telling her about aliens from parallel worlds. She probably can't even see them anyway. Have you prepared already? Prepared? For another hike? No. Today's the last day of the session. What? A stupid smile settled on my face. The will you... Oh my god. Diese Sprachaussätze kam gerade wirklich von Müdigkeit, Alter. Der will be a bus this was der will be a bus this evening, we're leaving. Holy Kuh! Deine Titten sind gigantisch! I was ready for even the most incredible of twists, but... Was this what that mysterious piney was talking about? Probably it was. But apparently I have to go for a second lap and live yet another week in this camp. But this time I know everything. 
I haven't packed yet. It's not like I have much to pack anyway. Okay. Slava shifted her gaze. Seems like she wanted to say something but hesitated. Well, see you then. Yeah. I had to ask when we're leaving at least. I went to the square with the intention of discovering that. There's got to be someone I know there. But believe it or not, there was only Genda waiting for me at the square. Probably all the pioneers are busy with packing. I took a seat on a bench and just stared at the sky. It turns out that today I just have to wait for the departure, pass out on a bus and wake up in the camp again, just like the first day. Everything was drowning in silence. It's exactly the time of a summer day when the sun seems stuck in the sky, the birds and crickets have gone for after lunch dose, and the wind is, ex is saving its energy to deliver long-awaited coolness to people in the wee evening. It suddenly crossed my mind that I haven't just missed lunch, but I haven't had any breakfast either. It was ridiculous to search for anything in the canteen. The pioneers had surely cleaned up everything just before the, de for just before the departure. I scratched my head and made my way back to Olga's cabin. Surely there should be something edible in the table's drawer. Drawer. Bums. 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 Bude. Oh, mal frische Luft reinlassen. Ist schon wieder so warm hier drin. Oh Gott. Uh. Someone called for me just as I approached the door. Shirk and Electronic swiftly approached the cabin. Uh, are you already packed up? Already packed up, I answered, imitating him. You haven't quite been yourself the last few days. What makes you say that? How should I know? You would know better. Wow. I mean, why, you, why are you so concerned? No reason. A real pioneer always treats the comrade problems as his own. <laughs> Dieser Blick. I cast a skeptical look at him. Thanks for your concern, I'm fine. There actually was half a, half a loaf of stale bread and a piece of smoked sausage in the drawer. Ah, so Russisch. I've ate everything with deliberate pleasure, washing it down with smelly water that Olga probably used to wash her, uh, the, used to water the plants. Just as, just as I finished, someone started knocking on the door. Come in. Olyana rushed into the room. Oh, it's just you. She, <laughs> she said disappointedly. And who did you expect to see? A circus com complete with beers? Juliana giggled. Where's Olga? Don't know. I shrugged. Why not? I don't know because I don't know. What do you want from her anyway? Got to ask something before the departure. Okay, I'll tell her that you are searching for her if I see her. By the way, why are you packing? Like I have much to pack. Well, see you. She cracked a sly smile and bounded off, uh, out of the cabin, slamming the door behind her. And still, it's really strange that nobody seems to be puzzled by the sudden departure. And why am I the only one who was not expecting it? Like, everyone really cares if I've packed my things up. As well as that doesn't anyone care that this is the last time we're seeing each other? The words of that guy in the forest yesterday about all the camp's tenants being unreal suddenly sprang into my mind. Well, right now I'm more ready to believe it uh, than, uh, than ever. The desk drawer where I found my breakfast contained lots of odds and ends. I grabbed a small pencil and a piece of payback, examined them for, for some time and slipped them into my pocket. Just in case. I had no intention of watching over all the pioneers running around and packing, so I just lay on my bed and didn't even notice how I dazed off. <laughs>